We welcome in Buck Showalter, manager of the surging division leading New York Mets. Buck, it's good to see you. Well, we need to do a little more surging. Look at all these <laughs> left-handers, three left-handers. Believe it, row. That's right. You, you should be left-handers. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Buck, I just, just uh, on a personal note, you worked with us last year, but just looking at the way this season has gone for you guys, and even the way you have one big matchup after another. You had Braves, Phillies, Yankees, now Dodgers. I mean, personally, what's it like for you? I mean, it has to be better than you even expected to come back. Well, I've been fortunate to have a real good group of people, and things are already in place when I got here. Make that adjustment <laughs> on the fly. Yeah. All your notes are gone. You, you can wing it. I can tell you. I've, I've worked with you. You can wing it. No, but it's just, you know, it's been an honor to, to be able to do it. Something so precious to our fans here. The old timers game we had here the other day, my gosh, that didn't draw a tear. I know how much it meant to them and the fans. But we had a shot of a, a grown man crying when Willie Mays got his jersey retired. I showed it to the players. You don't think people care about what you're doing every day, but. Uh, it's a fun team. These are guys that if I wasn't the manager, I'd hang out with them. They uh, they get the competition and trying to stay in a moment where so many things try to get you to think about next week and next month. And you, you just got to stay in, in the moment every day. And it, it's hard and it requires them trusting each other. You know, I have a soft spot for relievers. You have one right now. And Diaz might be the best in baseball. What has been the transition from the last two years to this guy that's just uber dominant right now? You know, Dan, and you know it better than anybody, when you go through some failure, especially in New York, and you turn the corner, you gain a real confidence. He and Max have one thing in common. They never assume any hitter in the, in the lineup. You know, they attack uh, eight, nine guys that everybody said they should get out like they're lethal, and they never drop their guard. You know, they say, listen, you know, I'm not going to let something develop. They're proactive instead of reactive to something they've created by not being on top of their game. You think everybody's like that, but some guys are kind of reactive pitchers. After something happens, they kind of step it up a level. They're bringing their A game from the first pitch on. How about Francisco Lindor? You know, speaking about precisely that, right? Had a tough time in the first year in New York. And now he has emerged again into that star that we have grown accustomed to seeing. Yeah, and that's a great comparison because, uh, you know, some guys never recover. You know, I had a talk with him early on. I had all these things I want to tell him, and he stole my thunder. He said exactly what I was going to tell him. I go, it's over. You know, go play shortstop. And these people are waiting to embrace you. And so, it's up, you know, years ago, David Cohn had a great line outside my office after he got booed off the mound two stars in a row. He said, Hey, they're waiting to embrace me. It's up to me to give them something to embrace me. Our fans want you to do well. And uh, the big thing with Frankie is he posts up. This guy loves to play baseball. He loves to talk the game. He loves to just walk in the office and say, hey, what about this situation? What should we do? What are you thinking there? And he understands the most important thing he can do for us is post up and play shortstop and be there for us. Tonight's starter in DeGrom. What are your expectations for tonight and moving forward? Well, first of all, you got to get the cooperation of the other team. You know, hey, we want him to throw this many innings, this many pitches. You know, if there's a fight at the bat rack, you know, you probably got to make some adjustments. But, you know, it, you can you can script certain things, but the game doesn't always cooperate with you. So when the game gets off script, but you know, he's growing as a, as a, as a durability factor, and we're trying to figure out where that point is where you don't go past it. But. Uh, you know, it's about keeping all our pitchers healthy because it is something that we have a chance to be pretty good at as the rest of the season progresses. And we're always going to err on the side of health. Can I ask you that? What, what do you look for, Buck? Is it your eyes? Is it fatigue? Can you get, do you get any uh, spin rate or velo from baseball ops people? What do you look for to say, I think it's time to go get Jacob now? Well, they don't exactly run those those numbers up there, but uh, it's an eyeball test mostly. But we've got a great pitching coach here in Jeremy Hefner who has a great history with Jake, and everybody has a little different body language when you talk to him. Uh, you know, I, I talk with Max a lot. He just, you know, after the fifth inning, you can tell what's going on. Uh, Jake's uh, got some similarities there, but but I, I kind of lean on the pitcher and the pitching coach and who understand everything. But at the end of the day, we have to make the decision. So we take in a lot of information before the game start starts. But like we had to make a bunch of adjustments last night because of the rain threat and who we brought in, and who we didn't. So every game's different. They throw some different circumstances out there that you have to adjust on the fly. Buck, look, you've managed so many great pitches throughout your entire career. What is it about DeGrom? What is the characteristic that when you met him, you're like, OK, now I understand why he's so good. He's got great levers, great levers. You know, think about a swimmer's body, you know, the long arms, the levers, the torque that he creates, uh, the angle, uh, you know, plus pitches. You know, actually, you know, he's throwing as hard, if not harder. And I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but he has multiple pitches. He's not a one way Harry. He, he can do, thing, do some things with the baseball. I think the one combinator 
the common denominator of great pitchers like Dan, they got a great hand. They have a great hand. They can manipulate the baseball. They can pressure point. They understand things. And it's not always an iron mic. Sometimes they have to, hey, I'm not carrying that tonight. Let me go here. You've had a chance now to manage Pete Alonzo. What makes him such a good run producer? Pete's a very consistent human being. It's not, you never, our whole clubhouse for the most part, you don't go, hey, uh, what kind of moves he in today? They, they don't, they, they come in the same guy every day. And that's that consistent culture you're able to develop because people, you know, Pete, win, lose, or draw. The next day, he, he doesn't live on yesterday's successes or failures. He moves on to the next at bat, the next day. And uh, that's a hard trait to follow. Can you imagine Dan having that type of power at, at sure? hands and knowing that you're not going to get a pitch to do and give in and drive a ball the other way. People do that. You know, he, that's how people drive in runs. They're not just trying to hit the ball where the grass doesn't grow. Will Timmy Trumpet being held over for another day affect your bullpen usage? More pressure. More pressure. <laughs> I don't read the clips here, okay? It's, it's important. You know he's, you know, set, early, early, you know he's here. Uh, yeah. He's staying here. In, you know, New York years ago, I learned don't read the clips. I put the <laughs> back up here. I just go, hey, if I'm going to get an ambush, tell me something that's out there. Of course, today they said, hey, uh, you, you, you got to get this guy in the, you know, in the game. Like, well, you go we tell, need the Dodgers to cooperate. You cooperate. Can you go tell the Dodgers to do that? He's actually reaching a point where he's almost had too many days off. So, but I don't want to bring him in, you know, we're behind. What would you do, Dean? Uh, I would, <laughs> no chance. Put that, lead that horse in a barn until you need him. <laughs> run him when you need to run him. <laughs> write that down. <laughs> what if you opened? You could open him with that win. Can I tell you, and believe it or not, you're not the first one brought that up today. I brought it up in the, and we were talking in there. So what if I just opened him? The pitching got it out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And it's yes. four to three in the ninth inning, and you've already used him in the first? Man, that is you sit that, back here with me wearing makeup. <laughs> 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 Jimmy Trump has got a lot of power. I didn't know Jimmy Trump had hey, that much power. more than a one-hit wonder. You might yeah. want to check out his music. Pretty good. <laughs> All right. We, we got to go, but the revolution has come full, full coming, circle yeah. right there. Buck, best of luck. Congrats on the Thanks, success. Guys. Miss y'all.